Next up on Week in Review. Us Tool Talk demands more from Akita. Toolbox Buzz finds the best one-handed cordless recip. And we reveal two new shows coming to our network starting tomorrow. It is a big day, yes. and this is your Power Tool Week in Review. Hey guys, I'm Ram. And I'm Sarah. Welcome back to the Power Tool Week in Review. It is January 31st. Mm. You know, I hate it when people are like, where'd the month go? Okay. Well, where'd the month go? Okay, great start, Rob. How about we talk about our Australian brothers? All right, that's a better idea. Earlier this week, Dingo and Baby Not their names. reminded us that for some unholy reason, it's summer down under and decided to put a Makita 36 volt DLM 461 mower to the test. They've tested battery-powered mowers before, and the Makitas seem to have all the power and features that they could ask for. Well, Mike wanted one more. Yep, I want a turbo mode. Yeah, why not? Factory destroyer, bang. Press it on, and it goes for five seconds, ten seconds, or I can override it. If I want to destroy my batteries in, in 15 minutes, yeah. I should be allowed. Let me. Yeah. We couldn't agree more, Mike. I'm not sure if your constitution grants the right, but if it doesn't, it should. If you're knee deep in snow and want to live vicariously through these guys, visit Oz Tool Talk on YouTube. If power tools are part of your daily grind, you already know that size isn't everything. That is, until you have to carry the same tool with you all day. Fortunately, Andrew, the leader of the militarized kite flyers, caught a ceasefire this week to mourn the loss of his Milwaukee M12 drill and set off on a mission to replace it, possibly with another Milwaukee. But joining the red M12 in this contest were compact 12-volt drills from Rigid and Makita as well. Andrew doesn't play favorites here and runs all three through a decent battery of tests. And to find out who won, head over to Kite Army on YouTube. Are you looking to add a cordless sheet sander to your toolbox? Before you do, we suggest you swing by the Tool Review Zone where Clint takes a look at the DeWalt Brushless XR version. By now, I don't need to tell you that Clint takes his time working his way over every inch of the sander, and for good reason. Clint likes the power and portability, but seems to worry a lot about having really tiny hands. That the grip on this is a little bit wide. It's just like the orbital sander. So if you've got small, tiny, tiny hands, well, it, it might be a little bit wide for you. Again, I think if you're, you know, someone with small, small hands, well, it might be a little bit too wide for you. I'm just being honest. However, you would really have to have very tiny, tiny hands for this to be uncomfortable. His hands don't look that tiny in the footage, but he has been known to play with video effects. To judge for yourself, you can find Clint at Tool Review Zone on YouTube. The review team over at Toolbox Buzz has once again left the job site empty just long enough to thoroughly test the best of the best. This time around, they set out to determine which cordless one-handed reciprocating saw is the one that you should own. They look at Bosch, DeWalt, Cobalt, Metabo, and Milwaukee. Now, I'll be honest, I didn't realize that there were this many options. Rob tells us that these one-handers have become increasingly popular recently with plumbers and HVAC pros who often need to cut through some pipes as quickly as possible. The review comes with a standard TBV fodder, including bar graphs, spreadsheets, mic talking in slow motion, drone shots of the guys working down on the ground with tools too small you can't see from the sky, and of course, gratuitous action shots of hot recip action. To see who comes out on top, visit Toolbox Buzz on YouTube, or you can read the entire article at toolboxbuzz.com. Now that we're done poking fun at Rob Robillard, let's check in with him to see if he's doing any actual work. Hey, Rob. Hey, I'll have you know that those gratuitous action shots are critical to tool testing. <laughs> well, all right, well, last week we chatted on spray foam and how it's the uh, basement insulation best practice. Well, this week I wanna talk about the second best basement insulation and it's foam board um, and it's really good especially if you're trying to save money and do it yourself it's, it has its application using rigid foam board it creates a really good vapor barrier along with a layer of insulation that will not promote mold growth it just won't grow poly plastic layers and craft face insulation they are not good solutions for basement vapor barriers now poly iso rigid insulation board is the best board to use PolyISO is a closed cell, rigid insulation foam board that has fire retardant properties. And if you're gonna use PolyISO, I recommend that you use two inches, a two inch thick board. Um, you're gonna put it in, you're gonna put it tight to the floor, to top of the wall or top of the joist bay, whatever. And when done, you need to just make sure you seal all your seams with foil tape, use a spray gun applicator to fill all the gaps 
any remaining penetrations or air leaks because you and you have to use that foam sealant, but you've got to seal the air leaks. You can then put a basement two by four wall right up against it, up against the polystyrene boards, and then you can backfill with fiberglass insulation if you want to increase that uh, insulating R value. Now, we just published a video today, actually, a detailed video on rigid foam board installation on our YouTube channel. Check it out if you get a chance. Guys, have a great week. Next week, we'll talk a little bit about properly sealing the rim joist area. It's one of the uh, most commonly avoided or ignored areas for insulation. Take care, guys. Thank you, Mr. Robillard. Our buddy Mark Thomas took to YouTube this week to go in-depth on the Milwaukee 9-inch concrete cutoff saw. Mr. Builder tests the saw on several masonry blocks in his driveway, and for good measure, he includes a detailed look at Milwaukee's backpack sprayer, which, by design, works perfectly, providing water to the saw while cutting concrete. Gotta keep that silica dust down. As impressive as the saw turns out to be, the reality is not many of us need a 9-inch concrete cutoff saw. But that has yet to keep any of us from buying the tools that we want. Am I right, guys? Your wife watches the show, Rob. Uh, she knows I'm kidding. To learn everything you need to about this Milwaukee monster, head over to Mark Thomas Builder on YouTube. And finally, Richard from Finnish Carpentry TV followed through with his promise to produce a Milwaukee shirt making them available on his website for a very limited time. As a matter of fact, you only have nine days left. Of course, Rob already ordered his. Yep. And I'm sure he got one for me as well. Uh, I didn't know your size. You're the worst. There's still time left. Well, you can order one for yourself and for your co-host, if you were a decent human being, through a special link that we'll have included in the description of our show. How about while Sarah desalts, let's get caught up on our industry news with a construction junkie. First up, Shane seems to think that we deserve to be subjected to a music video parody of Old Town Road by a construction company in St. Louis. He is wrong. But here it is anyways. The Up Company spent some serious dough putting together their own music video because, you know, marketing? That in and of itself is not shocking. What is shocking was that the construction junkie was also able to dig up a rapping safety seminar titled The Real Slim Safety and another rap video, this time from Cat, titled Dozer Pride. I'd love to rag on these guys, but hey, they're doing what they love. I hope. The USGBC recently announced their 2019 rankings of the top 10 US states for lead construction, sorted by gross square footage per capita. Essentially, we're looking at bragging rights over green efficient buildings. Wanna know where Ohio is on that list? Sure. Uh, it's not. Oh. Yeah, but that doesn't get us down. We still have an overabundance of serial killers, three or four sunny days a year, and a never-ending feud with Michigan over Toledo. Yeah, we won Toledo. What was I talking about? Oh, lead buildings, right. You can find the top 10 list and all the rest of your construction industry news over at constructionjunkie.com. Wait, serial killers? Oh yeah, like Anthony Sowell, Jeffrey Dahmer, Donald Harvey, Ariel Castro. Okay, okay, that'll do. Let's head over to Instagram and see if we can find something a little bit more fun to talk about. Ginger Woodworks got his hands on a skill 12 volt one-handed recip, and in his words, it is an invaluable addition to your toolbox. The tool pig got his muddy hooves on the new Milwaukee fuel installation drill and staged a pair of tool fights with the Vestal TXS and the Bosch FlexiClick. There's a full review on his website. Are you as proud of your work as John Malecki is over his? If not, then you should probably work harder. This is the face that he makes when he's excited about learning new things like timber framing. Hugh over at HD Carpentry wasted all of our time by comparing three totally unusable jigsaws from DeWalt, Hilti, and Milwaukee. They're not barrel grip? They're not barrel grip. Garbage. Montreal Sparky showed us all why electricians are a little insane. If you are a Sparky or if you're looking for the best tick tester, you should probably check out this Santronics 3000. Oh, it's so scary. Ethan Abramson of the Build with Ethan highlighted his new Milwaukee M18 cordless router primarily to make me jealous. Well played, sir. Speaking of Ethan, he has a small announcement to make this week, so we're gonna go live to New York with Ethan Abramson. What's going on, everybody? I am excited to announce my brand new show, People, Places, Power Tools with Ethan. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's gonna be meeting some great people in some amazing spaces and talking about the tools that they use to get through their day. There's gonna be one episode each week, so be sure to tune in.
I'll see you there. Oh my gosh, I cannot freaking wait for that. I know. So we've known Ethan for quite a while now. We are big fans of his. We love it when he goes to these big events and interviews people. So now with his new show, we get to see him go out and meet new people every single week. So you're going to be able to find that show every Thursday at 5 o'clock right here on Belts and Boxes. That is not the only thing that is coming to Belts and Boxes. It's not. So we are starting a new show starting tomorrow morning on Saturdays called Make or Break. That's right. Cannot wait to show it to you guys. We're not going to spoil it all now, but it involves a lot of me and Sarah in a shop with work aprons on and building things and making, making a mess. Things, yes. Yeah, it's going to be a ton of fun. So be sure to check in tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. All right, so last week you made a promise. So you what promise? Do. You are going to give somebody peak markers. Uh, all right, pick somebody. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I feel like you're faking this. No, uh, because Sir Vogels is winning peak markers. Congratulations, Sir Vo Vogels. Vogels. <laughs> Sir Vogels? Yeah. That's fine. Either way, I did. I promised. So, But I will reach out to you, get your information, and I will buy you a set of the peak markers. You're so. welcome. Why are you welcoming him? I'm the one that's buying the markers. But this was my idea. I think this is your fault. No, it's I don't know if your idea. idea. All right, thank you, Ohio Power Tool and Skillsaw, for sponsoring the show. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And we'll see you tomorrow morning.